let's look at the questions that came in your CBT part 2, uh, the second CBT that you have given in FMG and uh, let's look at the basic questions that are asked and first is an image based question which of the following is an absolute contraindication of the procedure in the image. What does this look like? There is a needle and at the end of the needle you see a drop and you see a syringe filled with a drug. This is subarachnoid block. because your subarachnoid space contains CSF and when you deposit the drug in CSF then it is called as subarachnoid block. This is also called as in a common language called as spinal anesthesia. When we do it under anesthesia it is spinal but if somebody is doing it for diagnostic purposes so they will only take out the fluid not inject something then it is called as lumbar puncture the procedure remains the same what changes is the procedure remains the same but what changes is your approach here as an anesthetist we are doing this so that we can get desired anesthesia for the purpose of surgery. But when you just want to take out the CSF for diagnostic purposes it becomes lumbar puncture. Procedure is the same CSF coming out you pushing something in. For both these things there are certain absolute and relative contraindications. Absolute contraindications means when there is no argument you do not have to do a lumbar puncture that is patient refusal. Consent is very important. Raised ICP. What happens if there is raised ICP and you put a needle? The CSF will gush out of that needle very fast, which will cause sudden decrease in ICP, which can cause coning. Medulla khich ke cone ho jata hai. Patient will suffer severe bradycardic arrest. Infection at the site of the procedure because then there is a risk of meningitis. Apart from these three, every other thing can be considered as a relative contraindication like multiple sclerosis which has pre-existing neurological disorder. So you don't want to complicate it by injecting some drugs. So liver cirrhosis, again liver cirrhosis means the metabolism by liver will get affected you are injecting local anesthetic there is a possibility you will have prolonged action pregnancy is not a contraindication at all raised ICP is an absolute contraindication <clears throat> identify the capnogram shown below whenever you have a capnogram what is the rule the rule is to think two things always start with expiration and think like a transducer. So you are the transducer at the end of endotracheal tube and the patient starts to expire. What will you see? You will see a respiratory base. Then you will see an expiratory upstroke. Then there will be alveolar plateau and then there will be inspiration. So it is happening nicely but what is happening is that the expiratory upstroke and the plateau they are increasing in amplitude. So the graph is moving up. That means there is CO2 accumulation there is CO2 accumulation if there is CO2 accumulation that means it could be the patient is not able to breathe out properly so that is respiratory depression this is very common decrease in the rate or depth of respiration let's look at hyperventilation will lead to CO2 washout which will lead to hypocapnia. Rebreathing, will it lead to hypercapnia? Yes, but at the same time the graph will not touch the baseline. Why? Because of inspiratory CO2. You will inspire the CO2 that is exhaled by you. So there will be inspiratory CO2. So the graph will not touch the baseline. So yes, you will get hypercapnia, but the graph will not touch the baseline. This is graph touching the baseline. Can you see the baseline is intact? 
हाइपो वेंटिलेशन यस दिस कुड बी द रीजन फॉर हाइपर कैपनिया ब्रोंकोस्पैजम सी इन ब्रोंकोस्पैजम यूजली यू सी शार्क फिन अपियरेंस एंड बिकॉज द पेशेंट इज नॉट एबल टू वेंटिलेट एट ऑल देन यू माइट सी हाइपो कैपनिया लेटर ऑन बट यू सी अ वेरी टिपिकल कैप्नोग्राम दैट इज कॉल्ड एज अ शार्क फिन अपियरेंस वेयर दिस expiratory phase becomes very very acute because of prolonged expiration so the correct answer to this question is hypoventilation which is anyway straight forward in hypoventilation there will be co2 retention and the graph is showing an upward trend okay adrenal suppression fact based question we know adrenal suppression is a direct side effect of etomidate by inhibiting 11 beta hydroxylase enzyme Eleven beta hydroxylase enzyme. So, because there is inhibition of eleven beta hydroxylase enzyme, therefore, it causes adrenocortical suppression. Therefore, you should not use it in long term ICU intubations. Right. So, correct answer is etomidate. Which of the following results in reduction of incidence of post-operative vomiting in children undergoing strabismus surgery? Except, so we are looking at risk factors for POV. Let's look at options: adequate hydration, DEXA, ondem, anticholinergic. Will ondem citron be something that will be use, useful in post-operative vomiting? Yes. DEXA, yes. Hydration, yes. But we know that anticholinergics have more or less no role on the nausea and vomiting. Yes, they will decrease secretions, they will maintain the heart rate, but they will more or less no have. They won't have any effect on the anti. on the anti emetic action because they are not very good anti emetics so anticholinergic atropine or glycopyruvate will have no role in post operative nausea and vomiting which of the following factors will cause falsely low reading on the value of pulse oximetry except so which will not cause false low reading so we should look at the factors that causes false low reading so we know false low reading is most commonly seen with methemoglobinemia where you see a fixed saturation of 85% sometimes in the treatment of methemoglobinemia we use something called as methylene blue which will further decrease it to 65% then you have peripheral vasoconstriction in terms of shock you have shivering you have badly positioned probe you have nail paints these are certain factors where you have false low reading will you see false low reading in hypotension hypotension yes peripheral shock black nail paint yes severely jaundiced skin no doesn't change the reading it remains the same badly position probe yes so the correct answer is severely jaundiced skin i have given you the table of factors affecting pulse oximetry reading in your in your discussion you have to remember every single word of it it is an extremely extremely important topic for the exam and we can expect one question from this in your exam so you have to remember every single word of it which factor will increase the reading thankfully only one example carboxyhemoglobin decrease in reading i just pointed out all the factors no effect skin pigmentation self hemoglobin hemoglobin fhs jaundice fluorosin all these things will have no effect on the pulse oximeter reading so these were the questions that were asked in your cbt i hope you have given your cbt genuinely have some faith study very hard it is not a very difficult exam if you have your presence of mind just keep on having the belief that you are going to clear it this time my best wishes with you if there are any doubts you can always contact me on messenger you know my name i'm dr anshul divakar and my page is anesthesia shots by anshul you can also messenger me on my personal id that is dr anshul divakar Thank you so much and God bless you.